Greetings and welcome back to my workbench. Dan here as always and in today's video we're going to be weathering a scale trains bulkhead flat car and this is a really interesting prototype. Matter of fact I don't think we've ever done one of these styles of cars on this channel uh, as of to date. Uh, so this is going to make a really unique weathering challenge for me and a great piece of material for you guys to watch and learn. Uh, this car out of the box is very very nicely detailed. Uh, you can see as we look at some of those details uh, on the sides, the underbody, uh, the detailing is exquisite. The bulkhead detailing with all the separately applied parts, the grab irons, uh, the nicely done wood boards on the bulkheads, uh, everything looks exquisite here. Having a nicely detailed model obviously makes it a lot more fun to weather because uh, you get to see a lot of these details get enhanced with weathering. Out of the box, they're great. They offer these in many different paint schemes, including the more modern patch schemes, which I particularly like, and what this is in particular. And I have a couple of these that I've purchased, so hopefully down the road we can make some more videos on these uh, as we find different prototypes to weather. I also should mention these come with these really nice laser-cut wood deck kits. Uh, I think on the newer cars these are already installed, but on the older runs uh, these come still as a separate kit. And we're going to get to be able to do some really unique weathering effects to these boards as we uh, progress. So this is the car I want to get some of my techniques, or rather my reference from. I did not choose to do the exact prototype number because the prototype number had some, uh, some interesting weathering that I particularly didn't want to weather and didn't want to try to replicate just for this particular video. So I chose this car which is of a similar number series. It has a lot of really interesting rust on the ends, a lot of interesting rust on the bulkheads. As we work down the sides of the car it's got some unique patching. Uh, take note here of the little black patch outs made out for the safety striping. That's something you see a lot on these different cars. Uh, if this one has some unique patched data, we're not going to go too insane with the patching today on this particular prototype. We're just going to be really focusing on the weathering uh, and also modeling the bulkheads. This version here does not have boards on the bulkhead as well. My model obviously has the wood boards on the bulkhead, so we're going to be doing the weathering slightly differently, but not too crazy to do. Uh, this will give us a nice advantage to be able to weather some wood, uh, which I don't think I've really ever shown my, any of my particular techniques for modeling wood. So this car is going to give us a lot of different challenges. Uh, there's a lot of nice grime, a lot of nice patching, some rust that we're going to be able to really integrate into the model. Starting off, we were talking about that patching, and what I want to replicate here is some areas that have been repatched over the years. And the way I want to do this is before I apply any kind of weathering, I'm going to take some masking tape, in this case, some Scotch Blue Painters Tape, and I'm going to take a fresh X-Acto blade, and I'm going to cut out some strips of tape to model little patch squares that I can put over specific areas of the car. For example, in this case, I'm going to be putting them over the TTX logo, I'm going to be putting those uh, pretty much over the car classification number and just a random area just here and there and I'm also going to make the patching slightly different per side. Uh, I just want to have all this applied now before I actually weather the car. Approaching the weathering step here you can see I've laid the tape out to mask off certain areas just to give us some unique variety on the car making it look like we again we have some of those repatched areas. Uh, so this has all been prepped and it's essentially ready for weathering at this point. The first thing we're going to do in terms of weathering is we're going to apply a acrylic grime wash using our trusty airbrush here. My Pache gun here is set to 40 PSI. I'm using the earth brown acrylic paint and a little bit of 70% isopropyl alcohol. I've taken this paint, mixed it with the uh, alcohol with a old liner brush like this one here so I can properly mix the paint. And the consistency of paint I aim for here is consistent to skim milk. Now. Where I'm starting off on this car, as you can see, is the underbody. The underbody is going to be uh, pretty dirty, so I really want to focus the majority of this paint application for now on the underbody. We'll also take a look at those bulkheads, and we'll go in a little bit more detail with the bulkheads as well. Uh, the sides will be a breeze. The top deck portion of the uh, weathering here will be a breeze as well. Mainly what we're trying to replicate here is the grime on the main structural beam of the car. And it's going to obviously build up the most on the ends where the wheels meet the car body. On those bolsters, around the coupler pockets, and on the end beams there is where that majority of the grime is going to build up. Now we're replicating this by building up a relatively heavy layer of this uh, thinned acrylic just sprayed on with the air gun. And it's important when you're modeling these cars to hit all of these little corners at various angles. And this is going to eliminate any chance of having any untouched or unweathered areas. It's very unrealistic when you have a fully weathered car and then you can see very uh, tedious little clean spots kind of hiding out underneath. Uh, it drives me crazy so I really try to make an effort of 
when I'm weathering a car like this, hitting it at all these different angles uh, to make sure everything is completely covered with grime. Especially for the extent of weathering that we're going to be putting on this car, this is crucial. It's also going to be crucial when we get to the bulkheads, which we're going to show in a second. But here you can see I'm being very thorough. I'm hitting each one of these little rib members up. I'm hitting it at different angles, so I'll just simply move the car around with my hands there and then reposition it and then start spraying again. Once I've got the majority of the underbody done, I can now switch to the bulkheads. And just like the uh, underbody, this provides an interesting challenge because we have a lot of obscure angles and little corners and seams that we have to try to hit up. We want to make sure that everything is thoroughly covered uh, with this grime on the bulkhead, particularly at the base of the bulkhead where it meets the flat car. It's going to be very rusted in that area. You know, you have a lot of the grime spraying up on the ends, and then you also have a lot of that rust traveling down the bulkhead itself. Uh, same thing on the sides. You're going to see the most, really the majority of that rust is going to uh, pretty much accumulate at the base of the bulkhead. So what I'm doing here is I'm moving the bulkhead into different positions. I'm taking the airbrush, pretty much moving it into there almost right up against those surfaces and then spraying that grime paint right into those surfaces trying to hit this as many angles as possible uh, trying to get that paint behind the grab irons and any other obscure surfaces there I just want to again make sure everything is completely covered and if we do miss some spots we can always go back and touch this up with brushwork later on which is actually something I will do uh, however in this video series I don't really think I show too much brushwork for the end bulkheads there uh, the majority of this grime work is being accomplished with the airbrush for now and that's that's really what we're focusing on. Once you get the main interior portion of the bulkhead completed, then you can worry about the obvious parts like the sides of the bulkhead, uh, the top of the bulkhead for example. Those are going to be the areas where you're going to see a lot of that grime uh, build up and it's going to rust. But again, the majority of it is at the base of the bulkhead. Just remember that as you're making your passes. But here we're just doing some paint prep. Uh, pretty much in preparation for the weathering washes that will come later. Uh, we're trying to model that nice orange grimy tinted yellow paint that you see very commonly on these uh, TTX style pieces of rolling stock. Now onto the deck. And what I'm going to be doing here is kind of a random application of paint really only focused on the outer edges of the flat car here. Mainly hitting those top uh, supports there. Those metal strips that run in between the boards. I'm taking the airbrush, I'm running this between all those sections there, and I'm also spraying a little bit of that grime up onto the bulkheads themselves. Uh, here you're going to get to see it a little bit more in detail. I'm starting to work that paint up onto the bulkhead, and I'm also uh, hitting those little floor corners as well. Now I'm only really focusing on these outer areas and then the ends because those are going to be the most obviously seen areas. And the reason is because I'm going to be putting a pipe load on everything else. So the center portion of that flat car you're not going to see uh, as much with the load being there. Now that I've sealed everything up at this point, I can go ahead and remove the masking tape from our patches. Here I'm just using an X-Acto blade. I don't recommend you just use the blade because you have a risk of scratching up some of the data. I recommend you pull it up with the blade and then use a pair of modeling tweezers to carefully lift the tape up. But here I was just kind of trying to work fast and I just ended up using the blade itself and my fingers to pull the tape up. Once I got all that revealed, then we're ready to move on to the next steps. Now, also before I sealed up the majority of this car with doll coat, I wanted to do another interesting little technique to the end bulkheads. Bulkheads take a lot of abuse. Uh, they get pretty scraped up. A lot of things rub up against that uh, grime and everything, and you end up seeing these little scrapes in some of the grime. Not on all of the prototypes, but some of them. I've seen a number of these cars where they have these unique little scrapes where it kind of re-reveals the uh, old paint underneath. And how I'm modeling this is I'm taking a relatively frayed out brush that I've dipped in water. I have partially dried the brush off and then I'm just going in here and I'm just scraping the brush really roughly against the uh, raised surfaces of the bulkhead. So mainly like the rib portions, the supports for example, across grab irons. Uh, high impact uh, risk areas like these are going to be where you see these kinds of scrapes. Again, this isn't as common as some of the other techniques that I'll show for these kinds of cars, but you do see it sometimes and I figured I'd show this technique in this video just so it's another little technique you guys can add to your bag of tricks. There it's starting to come along pretty well actually. So next up we're going to go ahead and remove some of that grime from those bulkheads. I know I sprayed just a very light dusting of paint on here, but what I'm trying to do is I tried to get some of that paint in between those little areas between the boards. Uh, I sprayed some of that grime into those nail holes for example, 
And this is just a rough shadowing effect. It's also to kind of age that color so it's not so bright yellow. I want to maintain this color throughout the weathering on these end boards to make it look like these were replaced at a specific time. However, they're just starting to weather back in. And as you'll see, I'm going to add some damage to the base boards as well, uh, replicated with some heat and a dental pick. But we'll, we'll, uh, we'll pretty much get to that technique a little bit later in this video. Right now, I'm just working on taking a uh, dry Q-tip and scraping that across the surface of that uh, painted surface to remove some of that paint and leave some random blotchy little areas. Once I've sealed the car in with dull coat, I can move on to the oil washes. And the oil washes are going to give us the final rust colored tint for the car body. This is just the surface preparation. This is going to be also modeling some very fine rust streaking coming down the entire portion of the car body. There I have a little cap of thinner ready to go. And I'm going to be using two specific brushes for this technique. I'm going to be using a liner brush for the oil application. And then I also have a flat bristle brush like the one up above there, uh, loaded with thinner to help me kind of work this paint in and create some nice streaking effects. Starting off with the bulkhead there and the corner of the car, this is going to be the highest concentrated area of rust on the car is going to be around those bulkheads, around the ends where the trucks are going to be throwing up some of that grime. I'm going to be putting a relatively heavy wash of this oil. This is burnt umber oil again, if I didn't already mem uh, mention that. And I'm just going to be working this paint into that bulkhead around those grab irons, uh, working it upwards towards the top of the bulkhead. I will also hit the ends of the bulkhead, and I will also hit the top of the bulkhead, of course. Uh, I don't show it in this video just for the sake of time, but I do hit up all these areas. I'm only showing the sides uh, for demonstration here. Once I've applied the oil, I can then take that flat bristle brush, load it with thinner, and then I can come in and start blotching it across the surface of that uh, fresh paint. And what I'm trying to do here is kind of create some wavy effects, similar to how I do my wavy panel trick on covered hoppers. Uh, this is a very similar technique. We're just trying to kind of fan out that grime and make it look very wavy and uneven. So we have like little patches of grime. And then working down the side corners of the car, I'm going to start pulling that paint down. As the brush starts to get a little bit drier, I can start pulling some of that fresh oil down to create some very, very fine hair thin lines of rust streaking. Uh, very prototypically sized, very nicely evened out. The key with this is not to overwork them, you just want to very lightly work the brush over this surface and work that paint out very gently. To continue, uh, pretty much continue the demonstration here, I'm going to start in another area, in this case above the reporting mark. I'm just taking that paint and I'm just going to start very slowly working it out to get me started uh, using the liner. I'm making sure I'm tucking all that paint into each one of those little surfaces around those stake pockets, uh, pretty much covered everywhere. Here I'm just continuing to work it out to get it prepped. The paint's still nice and wet here, it's not too dry. And now what I can do is I can again come in with my flat bristle brush, loaded with a little bit of thinner and I can start pulling that paint down. Give me some nice little rain streaks, nice little rust streaks across the surface of that car. Again, very, very, very light dusting across the surface here. I'm just literally letting this paint brush glide across the surface. I'm not trying to force the brush into the paint, I'm just lightly working it. I don't want to destroy the uh, paint surface. I want to maintain a lot of that uh, heavy grime coating there. Again, you can see I'm just working it uh, same way but this time I'm in the patch area of the car where we did those little areas of replicated patching. And same application, I'm just working the paint right over all of those patched areas to kind of just blend them in and make them look a little bit more naturally weathered into the side of the car. I don't want them super clean here. I want to make it look like these have been applied a couple of years back and they're just starting to kind of grind back over and really just starting to uh, weather back in naturally toward uh, to the sides. There in a close-up shot, you can see after everything's dried up, we have some very convincing little stains of rust, a nice grime coat uh, that's ideal for the following applications of rust that we're going to be doing uh, here in just a second. It looks very, very nice, and again, it's very heavily concentrated on the corners of those bulkheads, mainly where that bulkhead meets the flat car portion. Again, it's just working up all the sides there. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and apply some trim film decals. 
Now, if you recall in the prototype photos, our prototype that we're basing this work off of has some interesting little paint patches where they applied new safety striping. And this is something you see very commonly. Sometimes they'll spray a primer color or just straight black and then they'll put the uh, safety striping right over those uh, little paint patches. And we're going to replicate them with this microscale trim film decal. Uh, they make these in black and white and a couple other different colors. Uh, I'm using the black, obviously, to replicate this. And I'm using, again, a brand new X-Acto blade, so it's nice and sharp. The reason being because this film has a tendency to rip and tear very easily, so we want to have a nice, sharp, clean cut for this. I just cut out a long strip like this one shown here in the camera uh, to get me started. And I'm just cutting this in the rough size I think I'll need uh, to get me some rough shapes to get me started. Once I dip this uh, whole piece of trim film in the water, then I can remove the decal backing and then just have the straight decal. And then I can further trim and refine it to the exact shapes that I need, as you'll see. There I'm just cutting out little strips. I'm just cutting out small strips for the ends and thinner, long, uh, thinner, shorter strips for the sides. Here you can see after I've finally cut them, I can then install them onto the model. And what I'm using is an X-Acto blade here, and I'm just very carefully positioning the wet decal onto the surface to get me started. Now it's going to be a larger brick on the ends to indicate the end of the car because that's going to be a double strip of safety tape and then for the center portion of the car moving in towards the center I should say you're just going to have a single strip of safety striping so I'm just using these thin strips of the trim film uh, applied randomly here and there uh, to position in place for the safety striping once I get these set in place with some microscal um, and solve a set I will then doll coat these in place to make sure they're sealed up and then I will go back and actually add the real reflective safety striping which I should remind you guys is Western Safety Reflective Tape. I get this stuff from Harbor Freight, cut it to size and then apply it. And later on as we start weathering this car you'll actually see the tape applied but I'm not going to show that process for this video. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to start preparing the wood decking uh, for installation on the car. And what we have to do here is cut these little panels out from the main sprue there. And it's nice the way Scale Trains originally had done these because all the boards were not individually cut. They were in five-piece sections so you could just kind of easily cut them out, have a nice brick that you could essentially weather. What I want to do in terms of actual weathering for these is basically stain them. Similar to how you see some guys use India ink or they'll actually stick them in some kind of weathering solution and soak them overnight and let this wood absorb the stains. I'm going to be doing this but more kind of the faster way of doing it using acrylic washes. But what I'm doing right now is just very carefully cutting these out. If you have any rough edges or anything like that, you can always, of course, clean the flashing off with your X-Acto. You can do a little bit of sanding with an emery board, and that'll prep these boards for you. It'll make them look real nice and clean uh, for the weathering process. So, I have a piece of styrene here, and I have two paints. I have earth brown and flat black. What I'm doing on this styrene piece is I'm taking a little bit of water from my mixing bowl. I'm using a liner brush to very carefully pick up little patches of paint. I'm going to transfer the paint to this styrene sheet and I'm going to go ahead and start mixing it on my paper. And I'm wanting to go in and make a very, very thin wash here. I want a very, very, very thin wash. Uh, thinner than I would normally do. If this was for plastic, I'd want it to be a little bit more of a thicker dilution, but because we're trying to stretch this paint out onto a wood surface, I really want this paint to very quickly soak into these boards. So I'm making it a very thin wash, as you can see and I'm diluting it down further with a little bit more water from my mixing bowl and once I get it to a uh, pretty much a satisfactory point where I'm satisfied with the consistency I'll take a different brush dipped in water I'll run some water across those board surfaces to get them prepped and then I will take that paint and I will start applying this in rather thin washes going across the uh, boards there starting off I'm following the grain of the wood to work it in just like I am here and I'm just again positioning it as I go and this is just the starting effect. Next up, I'll then take and start streaking the brush across those boards. And this is going to help me kind of work that paint wash into those nail holes, into the little, uh, those little seams between the boards as well. It's going to help me kind of work that color in. And here, very quickly, we get this nice light weathering uh, wash effect to these boards. And initially I was trying to model a relatively clean looking board where it was maybe replaced at some point in time, uh, but later on this isn't going to end up working out as well as I thought, and you'll see what happens, and uh, later on we do end up having to uh, redo these. But 
I decided to keep this whole clip in here because this is a very good way of weathering these boards up. I figured I'd keep it in there because it is still uh, pretty much educational for the purposes of this video. So I'll keep this clip in here. But again, I'm just working that paint on all those individual sections of boards. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and switch back to oils and I'm going to start working on the deck. Now I have the pipe load that I talked about in this video uh, pretty much out. And what I'm going to do with this load is fit it to the car in the rough position where it's going to end up being fitted later on and I'm just kind of testing to see where I need to apply oils around the load. I'm not trying to weather the entire interior of this deck. I'm only trying to work on the outer portions of those support posts and then of course the floor uh, approaching the bulkhead, those little exposed corners that are not obscured by the pipe load. Those are the areas I do want to hit this paint up but everywhere else where it's going to be concealed by the load I'm not going to worry about. Using the same brush that I used to actually model the uh, scrapings on the bulkhead itself, if you remember that section of the video, I'm taking some fresh burnt umber oil, straight, non-diluted here, and I'm working it across those little center supports on the deck. I'm just taking that paint and I'm working it right into those little grooved portions of these uh, deck supports. And I'm trying to also hit it at different angles. And the reason I'm using this frayed out brush is because it gives me this random little chipped effect where it looks like you have multitudes of individual little scrapes that have rusted up over time. It's a very quick and easy way of doing this. And of course you can make this as light or as heavy as you want, but in this case I'm making this pretty heavy. Here I'm taking uh, one of the interior portions uh, to demonstrate what the paint application actually looks like with this kind of brush. Here you can see it gives you this little random scraped pattern like you see here that looks very nice. It literally looks like you spent hours working this in with a fine tip brush when in reality it only took a few seconds to actually paint that on. So that's another little handy technique you can use for these flat cars. Uh, in particular if you wanted to do bare ended bulkheads where it was just a sheet metal bulkhead you could actually uh, do that technique on and it would look really good. Here you can see in the zoomed out uh, shot here, you can see how I'm only working that paint on the outer edges of those strips. Uh, again, not focusing on the interior of that flat car because it's going to be covered by the pipe load, so there's really no reason to uh, worry about it. Using the same brush, and while I also still have some of that uh, leftover oil, I'm going to go ahead and start hitting the top of the bulkhead with some paint scrapes. Uh, similar to how we did on those little center supports, I just want to model the scraping. Again, bulkheads are very abused. Uh, they get a lot of damage at the top there. So what I'm doing is I'm taking that brush, and I'm streaking the paint across the top of that bulkhead uh, to replicate little paint scrapes. Now, if you want to, you can model each individual little scrape with a fine tip. But in this case, uh, for the sake of demonstration, I'm doing this with this little brush. And it makes quick work of this. Next up, we're going to do some rust spots. And rust spots are always one of my favorite little techniques to do. And I demonstrated these a number, uh, really a number of times on this channel already. But I'm going to go ahead and show it for this video as well. Uh, because it's going to be a crucial effect for this flat car. If you remember, the prototype we're modeling has quite a bit of uh, rust rot on the end bulkheads. Mainly at the bottom corner of the bulkhead in particular. And we're going to be modeling that first by making uh, little dots with earth brown and black acrylic mixed together. This is non-diluted acrylic, it's just straight paint mixed together. I'm using an Atlas 10O brush to very finely apply little dots around the little areas like the grab irons, high impact areas where you have people stepping on and off the car, areas where they're going to get scraped, uh, areas around little stake pockets for example, around the jacking pad. Those are going to be the highest concentrated areas of rust on this car. So this is just the surface prep uh, at this point. We're just going in and applying these little dots to get us started. As we continue down the side of the car, here you can see again I'm just going to add these little dots to give us some fun little bits of variety and detail on the sides of the car. And we're just working this down uh, from one bulkhead to the other and on both sides. Uh, I will also put some of these dots on the uh, interior and uh, pretty much the uh, or rather exterior portion of the bulkhead on the ends as well. Now, after I've gotten all these rust dots painted on, I'm going to come back with fresh burnt umber oil, non-diluted again here. And I'm going to go ahead and apply some of those dots right over those acrylic dots that I applied uh, to get us prepped. And we're going to basically streak these down and render them a little bit with some uh, thinner and a flat bristle brush, as you'll see. Again, the majority of that paint's going to be concentrated at the base of the bulkhead around that area where it's going to be meeting the flat car, uh, where it's welded together. That's going to be a high rust area. So we're really going to be putting a lot of rust in this whole section here. Uh, also around the stake pockets, also around the jacking pads, those are all going to be uh, very rusty areas on the uh, model that we're trying to replicate here. So 
Again, I'm just uh, adding the oil randomly in little sections where I want it to be. And I'm going to be doing the majority of this oil rendering using that same brush that I'm actually applying the oil with here. In this next section, I'm going to go ahead and take that same brush, dip it in a little bit of thinner, and I'm going to go ahead and start attacking the uh, paint dots, and I'm going to start a pulling, pretty much pulling that paint down uh, in a streaked manner, just like rain streaks here. I'm pulling that paint down to model the individual little rust lines. And I want to do this because I really want to have the individually uh, very thick, heavy rust lines. Uh, you can, of course, try to render this with a larger brush, uh, but it starts to disintegrate some of those finer lines very quickly. Uh, the ability of using this fine brush is that you can paint all of these nice, fine, individual little lines one at a time, and you can build it up to exactly how you want it to be. You have complete control over where the rust is going, uh, compared to if you just took a large brush, spread everything out where it would honestly just make everything look very uniform and plain. Uh, the little brush gives me a lot more freedom to be able to work this uh, this oil paint exactly how I want it and uh, exactly where I want it. Again, heavier on the ends, but as we get towards the center portion of the flat car on both sides, we'll start even, uh, pretty much evening this out a little bit more. There you can see I've switched to the flat bristle brush, and this is going to be for pulling the paint down on those little rust dots on the top of the bulkhead uh, around those grab irons. Uh, this is just a great little brush to use, these kinds of brushes in general, uh, to help streak the paint down uh, to render the paint, pull it down a little bit, and model those individual little rust pits. Again, as we work down the side of the car, another little trick we can use here uh, to help the paint flow a little bit more evenly is to actually wet the surface of the car with thinner. And this is very similar to how uh, artists will tend to have a tendency to uh, prep the canvas for painting by using a wet paint mixture, generally called liquid white, where it's a very thin uh, oil-based paint that allows you to apply other paints over it very easily, and it allows you to blend and spread the paint much more evenly. It's basically a wet prep surface. Uh, this technique is very similar, although we're just using thinner and then applying the paint right over the thinner and letting the brush do the work, letting the brush stretch that paint out over that wet surface and pull it down. Notice here I'm pulling individual streaks of paint down from each individual little uh, stake pocket as well and also around that jacking pad again. I'm pulling it over the safety striping to model that rust that's being pulled over those surfaces as you can see. And it's just in a random manner here, but again, it's going to be really well concentrated over those raised surfaces. These are going to be uh, areas where a lot of that grime is going to gather, and over time it starts to rot in these raised surfaces, and it starts to streak down. So this is going to be uh, the main surfaces you're going to see the majority of this heavier rust streaking. But again, I have complete control with this brush, uh, being able to do the exact lines I want where I want them. Uh, that fine tip brush uh, just gives me so much control and I absolutely love doing this technique. Now I know a lot of this looks daunting, I know a lot of it looks wishy-washy, and it looks like it would take hours and hours to do, but I, I'll tell you what, you practice this technique a few times on one or two different cars, you get the hang of it very, very quickly, and with a car like this, you can have an entire side done within a matter of minutes, I'm not going to lie. Of course, I'm not saying you need to rush through this either, uh, take your time with it. Now what I'm doing here is actually uh, I'm dry brushing some of that oil up on top of those uh, boards and on the corners of those little uh, center posts too. Next up, we're going to model some board impact damage. I mentioned this earlier. What I'm going to be doing to model this is I'm going to be using a camping torch like this that gives me a little bit of heat. So this is basically like a propane torch here, a camping torch, and I'm using a dental pick uh, that I'm holding there. I'm going to turn the torch on to its absolute lowest heat setting where I'm just getting a little flame to be able to stick that needle in. And it's essentially going to heat the tip of that needle up very, very quickly, and then I transfer the needle to the deck uh, of the bulkheads uh, to model some little impacts. Again, as I've said already three times in this video, bulkheads get very beat up. And when you see these cars get unloaded, uh, you see a lot of times these little gashes in the boards, the boards get torn up and damaged. I've seen whole boards get ripped off. And you also have to remember these are uh, a high impact area for load shifting and things like that. Improperly uh, strapped down loads have a tendency to shift. I've seen whole pipe loads shift completely on cars before and actually impact the bulkheads. Uh, if you do go uh, Google searches of bulkhead failures, you can actually see where loads have shifted because they were improperly loaded. And a lot of times these bulkheads take some 
some pretty significant damage, especially when they have boards like this. All I'm doing is I'm taking that little needle pick there, and I'm just letting it glide across the surface of the boards. I'm not trying to do this in an exact pattern. I'm just trying to get random little dings and dents in there. Another huge thing here, don't force the needle into those boards. Just let it glide across. There you can see at the top of that board, I accidentally went a little too deep and I kind of gashed it. You don't really want that here. This is just a surface treatment. You just want light little surfaces to look like the wood's dented up and beat up and chipped up. Uh, you don't want it to go too deep here. So literally just let the needle do the work for you. Just let it glide across the surface and then pull it off very quickly grab more heat, and then move to another section. And here again, you can see I'm just going in a random pattern. I'm not trying to go to any specific pattern or using prototype photos even to replicate this. This is just how I think it should look, and I'm just going with a really random manner. But following prototype guidelines, again, the majority of that damage is usually going to be at the base of the bulkhead where the bulkhead meets the floor. That's where you're going to see a lot of that uh, damage. After we've completed that on both ends, I'm now going to take a heavy weathering wash of Burnt Umber Oil mixed with thinner. I'm again applying this with the uh, flat tip brush, and I'm going to be working this paint into the nail holes, into the little perforated sections between the boards, in all of those little damaged areas. And then once I do that, I'll let some fresh thinner flow directly over it and kind of pull down and pull down some of that paint. Again, I'll demonstrate this because that last clip was relatively fast here. What I'm doing is I'm applying that paint, just like this, vertical and horizontal motions here to work that paint into all those little gouges, all the nail holes and all the perforations. And I'm just trying to fill all this in. So you, again, I'm trying to be very thorough uh, getting that paint spread around here. Once I do that, I'll load that brush up with thinner and then I'll very carefully let the thinner flow down from the top all the way down and kind of pull up at the base of the car uh, to let that paint kind of flow into all those little seams. It creates this really cool little effect. Now moving back onto the floorboards of the car. Before we install these, I'm going to dry brush these with a little bit of gray acrylic paint to model some kind of dry rotted boards there. And I'm just going to do this in a random manner. Now, here's where we reached a bit of a challenge during this and something I did not initially plan during the filming of this video. As I installed these boards onto the car, thinking that this was going to look good, I realized very quickly that it, the weathering really didn't match up too well with the extent of weathering that I'd already done on the car. It just didn't look right. It didn't look natural. A car like this should have heavily rotted boards where they're really kind of more of a replicating a car that's been more out east and a lot more wet climate, not so much a car out west where you see a lot more of that dry rot. So I chose to do some more heavily rotted boards in the end here. And what I ended up doing was I did a very heavy mix of acrylic black and acrylic brown here. Mainly black, uh, and I'm just doing a full paint application. So non-diluted paint here. I'm applying it to those boards, just like this. And for the most part, I applied this color to all the boards, leaving only a few uh, either clean or I would just paint them a different color, maybe like solid brown or maybe just plain gray to look like I have individual boards. Uh, but I didn't try to do, you know, a super amount of detail at this point. I was just trying to get the boards painted so I can install them. Uh, so it did take a little bit of time, but it was something that I needed to do. After I had all the boards painted and sealed up, I then again test fit them onto the car. And after looking at this weathering compared to uh, the weathering on the flat car, I was honestly very satisfied at this point. So I proceeded to glue these down with super glue, and we were essentially ready to move on to further weathering and also applying the load later on. At this point, I've sealed up the car with, again, some dull coat, and now I'm going to use some Monroe Models Dark Earth to go ahead and start weathering the interior portion, rather the end portion of those, uh, or rather the main beam of the car. This is, again, the highest concentrated area of grime on the car, being that the wheels and trucks are right there. A lot of that grime is going to get kicked up on the ends. So I'm using this dark powder and a liner brush here, dedicated four powders, uh, to spread this paint down the majority of that main structural beam. Again, you can see how I'm taking a pretty heavy application of this, and even in those areas where I, doesn't, I didn't fully apply the paint and I didn't properly uh, shadow the paint, uh, I could take that powder in and cover those little areas up, and we've eliminated that little issue. Sneaky, huh? At this point, I also got the trucks prepared. I used earth brown and black acrylic, painted the trucks and axles. Uh, in this case, these axles would get a second coat of paint because they were a little blotchy, uh, but I just prepped those out installed them back on the car, and then I proceeded to paint the wheels with earth brown acrylic, full strength, non-diluted. And then once I did that, I then took a 
brand new Q-tip dipped in a little bit of water or alcohol. Alcohol works too. And then you just simply clean off the outer rims of the wheels. These are generally going to be pretty clean on these kinds of cars. Uh, so I just clean those off and now we're ready to go on to the final stage, which is to actually install the load and complete the car. Now you can see how we painted that deck how we did all the weathering around uh, the area where the load's going to be fitted. Uh, this is very nice. So this load is actually custom made. I did a little bit of uh, stenciling on it to look like uh, some uh, guys wrote some writing on there, some measurements and things. That's prototypical. Here's the link to the loads that I purchased. These are available on eBay, and here's the seller where I got the load from. He makes some very, very nice pipe loads. So with this particular pipe load, all I had to do was prep two baseboards made from styrene, uh, painted to match the real wood on the load, and I simply glued these to the boards on the car uh, to actually glue the load down to. Once I got the load glued to the deck of the car in, in pretty much in its final position, I then went ahead and pulled out some black tape here. And this is actually a roll of black tape I purchased on Amazon for uh, load banding. And we're going to be trying to model steel banding here in particular. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my metal straight edge. I always use a metal straight edge, never a wood straight edge, because when you use a knife to cut these strips out, or even when you cut styrene, a hobby knife like this will very quickly... Uh, untrue the edges of a uh, wood flat edge. You want to make sure you use a metal straight edge every single time when you cut paint strips, when you cut styrene. So I always use a metal straight edge for this and a brand new blade. And here I've just very carefully cut little strips out and prepped them for the load banding. Now this is the tedious part, I'm not going to lie. This takes a little bit of patience. And what you do is you take a little bit of super glue and apply it to a little modeling pick, or you can use a toothpick, the edge of an X-Acto blade, or whatever you have, and you just apply a precise amount of glue to one of the stake pockets to get you started. I then take the tape strip, which has a very bad tendency to punch up, as you can see. I am uh, actually struggling with this quite a bit during the videoing, or the filming portion of this. I ended up deciding that tweezers, modeling tweezers, worked a little bit better to position the load. I just pinch the uh, strip down and then wrap it over the top of the load and then work it to the other side where I again glue it down to the opposite corner pocket. Here up close you'll see this process a little bit better. You just take that glue, apply a little drop of it right to the top of that little post. You don't need much, just a little bit. Pull up your tape strip very carefully like I've done here. I have my modeling tweezers, and I'm going to try to straighten it back out. I'm going to pull it down. Again, it's giving me a bit of a hard time here. I'm just going to straighten the tape strip out, and then I'm going to take my modeling tweezers and pinch it down to that little stake post, and then wrap it over the load, and then glue it to the opposite side stake post, making sure everything's lined up very nicely. And that essentially completed the load on this car. It made it look very nice and clean. And after all that is said and done, we now have a completed car that looks absolutely incredible. The rust, the weathering, the streaking, all the paint patching, and of course that nicely detailed load just looks incredible on this car. And I'm so, so happy with how it came out. There's the trucks there with the mud splatter. I did a little bit of mud splatter on there. And then there's the bulkheads with that nice bit of damage. Uh, so this car came out really, really nice. And I really hope this inspires you guys to try some of these techniques out on your own for your own models. I want to thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.